On this day, 34 years ago, a man walked onto the campus of Cleveland Elementary School in Stockton with an assault rifle. He killed five young children and injured 32 other people. And at that time, that was one of the deadliest school shootings the country had ever seen. So tonight, you will hear a firsthand account of people who were all there that day. You will hear about the sounds that they can never forget and the images they will never be able to unsee. I do wanna warn you that some of these images may be distressing, so viewer discretion is advised. I remember being in the classroom and seeing everything. We heard what we thought were firecrackers. There are three people down, visible to us. Those aren't firecrackers, they're bullets and they're coming through our wall. We've got children scattered all over the school. She told all the kids, drop. When we arrived on scene, I didn't expect to see what I saw. Some fatalities, some injured. It was a beautiful sunny day, but then suddenly, you know, the chaos happens. I remember being in the classroom and seeing everything. We heard what we thought were firecrackers. Barbara and her room partner say those aren't firecrackers, they're bullets and they're coming through our wall. I was at the chalkboard writing stuff for my class and then all of a sudden I just moved back from the chalkboard when the bullets came through the, bull the chalkboard and landed at my feet. We opened the doors and there were kids coming through the hallway right outside our room but some of the kids would get partway into the hallway and fall because they had been shot. These kids came pounding through the door. You know, there wasn't a sound. They came in, wasn't a word. My room partner pulled one boy in who had a wound in his groin. She started applying direct pressure to that. Uh, right outside the door to our room, there was a boy who he was, kept saying, I want my mommy, I want my mommy. And I tried to comfort him. I kept waiting for the paramedics to come. We got a, a call for a man with a gun on the school at Cleveland Elementary. My partner and I um, uh, responded. As we moved through the hallways of the school, we could see blood trails that were um, kind of leading us to where a lot of the kids were. And when we would go into an office, but we didn't see any kids, but we saw a blood trail to a cabinet. And so we'd open the cabinet and there'd be a child in the cabinet hiding. And then two more engines. Uh, we've got children scattered all over the school. So we didn't have a protocol for active shooter response. In fact, the term had not even been coined yet, active shooter. That's why I got it as a man with a gun. This scene was so disorganized and so chaotic. None of the systems that are in place today were in place that day, 1989. was that we didn't have kind of an incident command system structure. We didn't have staging of ambulances and fire personnel. There are three people down, visible to us. Eventually, the bullets stopped, and then there was one different sounding gunshot. And I pretty much felt that was police taking care of the aggressor, but it turned out he had shot himself. I walked across the playground to a set of portables, and as I approached the corner of it, I heard a gunshot coming from around the corner. So I proceeded forward and came around the corner. And at that point, that's where I saw the shooter, Patrick Purdy, laying on the ground, who had just shot himself. Gunman Patrick Purdy used an AK-47, a semi-automatic rifle, to fire more than 60 rounds across the playground at Cleveland Elementary School. Five kids, ages six to nine, were killed. 32 others were hurt. What's it like going home? What was that night like? Being so scared and so frightened and having that PTSD, like I couldn't close my eyes, because if I close my eyes, I see him like shooting at me. My husband was home. I remember I went in and I remember grabbing his jacket lapels because I was just shaking and I was so grateful that he had pick up our son and bring him home, him home and being there. I don't know what I, how I would have reacted if I walked into my house and I was alone. I remember hearing my husband he had to get up and go to work a lot earlier than I did. And as he closed the door, I remember I started screaming and I couldn't stop. I didn't feel safe anywhere anymore because the bullets could go through my wall. 
So I didn't feel safe at home either. All through the year, we kept finding bullet casings in our storage shelves. One of the changes that I made was I never pulled one of my students aside to talk to them about their behavior when it was time for them to go out for recess or to go to lunch or to go home for the day. I never wanted a harsh word or a message to be part of them leaving me, uh, the last thing they would remember. It's something that, that I've learned to live with. It's never going to go away. Sometimes it feels like it was yesterday, and other times it feels like in some other life. This person wanted to kill himself. Well, why do you have to take all these children with you? I mean, I don't understand. Probably made me appreciate life and people, right? Like, you nearly lost your life, so when you experience that, uh, the human connection or the relationships, you know, became uh, very important for me. Connection. It's something that they have all been working to keep in their community. That's after the break. On this day, 34 years ago, a man walked onto the playground at Cleveland Elementary School in Stockton with an assault rifle. He killed five young children and injured 32 other people. Now, before the break, we spoke with several people who were all there that day. But now we want to share the impact that the shooting had on them and how they are using their experiences to give back to their own community. Two more engines. Uh, we've got children scattered all over the school. 34 years later, these incidents are still happening. Not just mass shootings, not just someone shooting children, but all of the gun events, they're still happening. Today, Adrian and Barbara are one of several teachers working to educate people about gun violence through an organization called Cleveland School Remembers. We work to help support legislation that they're working on for reasonable gun laws, help to improve community awareness and help people to understand what the needs are and what, what tools are available to help people with gun-related issues. I think any time you've lost a loved one, you want to be reassured they're not forgotten. And with gun violence in our society, it is such a tragic, ongoing problem. And so often the people who were killed weren't responsible for what happened to them. And I think it's very important to just remember people, to keep those individual lives in the spotlight. I feel that the violence is here and nobody is safe from it. Like you can go to the movie theaters, you can go to Walmart, and why? Why 34 years later? It should be like the reverse, it should be safer. Like my sadness is thinking about like, not just what happened to us, but the future. Salvador founded a company called TACMED Solutions, a tactical medicine and active shooter training service. And I decided that I needed to create my own program because what I found, there was this tremendous unmet need for a one day scenario based course. And we had to combine both medicine and tactics to ensure that the, the officers had the appropriate response to mitigate the threat and to provide medical care. So my course is scenario based and we put them through some uh, very strenuous stress inoculation, auditory exclusion style scenarios, but we also include medicine. How to save a life, how to stop a bleed. It gives me hope when I see people take the class because I want, I want people to be safe. And I, I, have, I have grandchildren and I worry about them. I just think that I have a responsibility which probably started in 1989 and has evolved to today.